So welcome back to the Coding Circus. Today we are going to look at dialog boxes that appear on the screen in kind of a, a separate window from our regular wizard world. These dialog boxes cannot really be interacted with the headset. I don't even think they render, I don't even think you would see them. They would show up on the screen uh, separate from the headset. So it, it really wouldn't be a great use of this if you're doing a headset, but it is great if you're doing like a, a, a game like Fortnite and it's based on the computer and it's a three-dimensional game and you have to have um, input from the user. This is a good way of doing it other than text boxes on the screen and the user typing information in a submit box. That way, like we saw in the info panel. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. First thing we have to do is uh, look at some code. There we go. And I added in a task, and we're gonna see why I need tasks in a second. And then I have this new import called viz input. And that allows me to add in message boxes across the screen. And this is what it looks like when I use one. Hello. It just says hello on the screen, that's it. So if we add in our world in front of that, The way this is going to work in code, it's going to run line six, run line seven, and then run line eight almost immediately. So all three run, but it's going to wait to finish rendering the rest of the world until I say OK for this hello button. It'll just sit there forever. Once I say OK, the rest of the world finishes and it comes in. So I don't know if exactly that's the, the order of which I want things to happen. I want to control that a little bit more. I don't want Vizard just kind of going through and do it line by line by line because it causes all kinds of problems. Here's another example. Let me comment this one up so it doesn't keep showing up all the time. I'm going to comment that out. Suppose I want to get information from the user in a text box. So I can do an input. from the user and assign it to a variable called key down answer. So when the user acts and presses a key down, it'll show an input box and it'll say, why did you press the D key? And um, the text box is going to be password false, which means it's not going to have the little asterisks in it. It's just going to be uh, normal typing text. And then I'm going to print my answer. Now that, this kind of seems logical that it would wait for the user to type in their answer and then I'd be able to print whatever they typed in. Well, it's not exactly what happens. So I'm running it and I press the D key down and it says, here's my text box. Why'd well, you press the D key? Then I press OK and nothing prints. Nothing happens, I can't get my answer back. So that's not that order of things is not gonna work. So I need to do something different. And I'm going to use tasks to do that. So I really doing um, these boxes along with tasks makes a lot of sense. So let's say I do a task that is, uh, I don't think I need the wait time. We'll take that out. So I'm going to do a forever loop, a while loop, and I'm waiting for the user to press the letter L, as in login. And I'm going to get a username using viz input. What is your name? Password false. So I should be able to see the name typed. And then I'm going to get a password, and it's going to say, what is your password? Password true. Then I could go through and check those passwords um, and print the answers. Here's another one, viz input dot ask, and this is a yes or no button, and it's going to print the answer. And then choice, select a drop down, mountain beach forest, and then print the choice. Each one of these inputs will wait until the input was received until I move forward. So I don't need a yield block or yield a command in front of any of these. The only time I need a yield is when I press uh, the number one to, to actually wait for it to do that. And then I could also do a color choice, uh, you know, that color menu that comes up where I can pick a color from it. And then I'm actually going to set the color background to whatever color I pick. 
So when I run this, it's going to run over and over and over again every time I press the letter L, which is kind of what I want to happen with dialog boxes. I want them to, to kind of um, be functional all the time. So I press L. Oh, what did I do? What did I miss? Oh, I know what I missed. I forgot to schedule the task. So viz task schedule question task will schedule this question task and it will sit here and wait for me to press the L key. And when I do, it's going to do all these statements and then loop back up to this and again, wait for me to press the L key. So when I run this and I press the L key, it says, what is your name? Now it's doing each one of these um, one after the other. I don't need a yield between the boxes, password with the stars, because it will automatically wait for my response, just like it did before when it wouldn't finish loading the screen. It wait, it was waiting for the response in the box. So it's kind of like an automatic yield. Are you ready? Um, no. And notice when I do no and forest. Oh, I can't even minimize this. It's really stuck. Choose a new color. And there's my new color. Okay. Notice when I said um, no was a zero, and then two was the second box I picked in the list. And then I also printed out my password on the screen and my name. Okay. So we can also change uh, some basic information about my box, my format boxes. I can move them around the screen and put them in different spots. So I'm going to create another task and I'm going to wait for me to press the key F. And if I do that, I can first change the message for my input box and move it to the center top. I could um, print a message and move it to um, the center top of the parent, which would be the center top of the desktop, not the window for wizard. Or I can move it to an exact coordinates of 50-50. Notice there's only two numbers. It's not three numbers because we're still only at 2D. I could set the default title to my app title. Or set the title. I'm sorry, not the default. Um, I can set the default center rather than just picking a center. I could just pick a new center and it will always stay that way. And I can set the default title so that way I don't have to always change the title. It will just be a new title called Mr. McLaughlin App. So I'm going to leave this scheduled so I can see the effect long term on each of these. And I'm going to schedule my other task for my format boxes. It's a good review of scheduling tasks as well. So I'm going to schedule my task. So now the first time I'm running this, I'm going to run it normally. And you can see where my box is. It's always going to be in the center. See, it's always sitting in the center no matter what. OK. Now I'm going to run my format. So uh, actually, let me do this again, because I want to do it in window mode. Uh, change different title, so my app title. Now when I run it, it's going to say uh, new default center is going to be down there. New default title is going to be there. So let me close that. And we're going to rerun this without making it full screen. So let me run my login again. Center, center, yes. There we go. New color, there we go. Now I'm going to run my format by pressing F. So this is the parent to the window, top center. Parent to the desktop, top center. Um, pixeled using 50-50. A new title. A new default center from now on will be this bottom part. So now, when I run that login now, all of those boxes should be down here. A new default title will be Mr. McLaughlin app. So when I run the login again, all the app title, all the title bars here should say Mr. McLaughlin app. So I'm going to run this my login again. And notice, look, the box is down here. A new color. Okay, so and the title was Mr. McLaughlin app, right? Mr. McLaughlin app is the new title. So we can set the defaults for those things as well. Okay, one last scheduled task I want to add in. You can open up a web browser. 
inside of Wizard. Now, the web browser is limited. It can't run any JavaScript or anything complicated, so you can't just do any old web page. You could do a web page that you created the own HTML for. I'm going to put in another task that when I press the H key, it's going to open up a window to display HTML. So viz.window display HTML. And then I'm going to put in the website for the wizard document. So this is a great thing for you all to write down and keep track of is when you want to look up how to do anything in wizard, you can go to https colon double backslash docs.vizworld.com slash wizard latest. Uh, if you just go to the first part of the address docs.worldviz.com and choose wizard because there's a whole bunch of other apps that they have, um, you'll get you get to it that way as well. But we are, I'm going to put it right inside this program. So when I press the space bar, it's going to make the menu disappear. Um, and I won't be able to see it again. So when I press the H bar, the H key, it's going to show the menu. So H shows it, space makes it disappear. I'm in a task that's going to loop forever, so it'll always work. And I'm going to schedule that task. And let's see what that browser looks like for our new help screen. OK. Now, I'm not going to press the other keys because I don't want them to come up. I just want to see my help screen. OK, and press H for help. And now I get this browser. It's going to take a second to load. It's not super fast. Hopefully, it loads. Oh, my computer's not connected. Oh, it, my computer stopped connecting from the internet for some reason. There we go. So now we have our wizard documentation right inside of our world, like laid on top of it. Spacebar should make it go away. H should make it come back. And I can go through and look at the different things that I can do. There's tutorials and examples. Uh, there's content crea uh, creation. There's the wizard uh, integrated development environment. It's searchable. So if you want to search for uh, uh, textures, it'll give you all the search result for texture. And we can jump right to a lot of the things that we've been talking about with examples and definitions. Uh, it takes us right to this kind of menu over here on the left as well, where we can jump around, um, look at something called multi-texturing, where we're blending. We didn't talk about this, so if you wanted to learn about it, you would do it that way. So there's a lot of different things that exist in this menu. We've talked about a lot of it. We haven't talked about all of it. So if you want to do some exploring of some more things, uh, you will go ahead and look at your help screen in this visit program or just go to the website yourself. Okay. So that is all I have for you uh, today. I will see you next time.